we need to talk. So I said in a video like two months ago that you could refer back to it, but I'll give you like a short little, uh, a, a short mini lowdown. Okay. So I was dating this guy for two years. We met in Florida when I moved to Florida and it turned out that he lived in New Jersey for half of the year. So I was like into the guy. So I was like, all right, I guess I'll go back to Connecticut where I just moved from so I could be closer to you for half the year, which is what I did last year. And I kept my apartment, but the issue is that I kept paying for my apartment the whole time I was gone. So it was like really inconvenient because, um, mama, I'm not Kylie Jenner. So you know what I mean? Um, I decided this year I'm not paying for an apartment that I'm not going to be staying in the whole summer. So I was like, I'm just going to let go of this apartment. So the whole plan is I was supposed to go back with him and go live in his house with him. But there's drama because his ex-boyfriend lives in his house. They have this weird codependent relationship going on where, like, they just, they're not together, but they just cannot let go. Can't stop living together. Such a habit. I mean, that's what happens when you live with somebody for fucking 25 years. Might as well just be married, right? Um, okay, so that situation's fucking weird, and I still let go of it just because, like, it never really affected me. Just based off of like he was always staying at my place but then when i think about it i'm like why is this guy staying at my place while his ex-boyfriend stays at his house like i'm paying for an apartment and stuff like 23 24 25 years old just paying for an apartment by myself trying to get by and everything and this guy has his ex living literally right down the street from my apartment okay so my logic behind everything was like why should i be paying for a place for both of us to stay in when we know that we're going to be staying together every night anyways. And I was like, well, I can just move in with you and I have no problem. Like, you know, we had our own little deal going on. Like I'll pay for something here and there or whatever. Well, this guy lives in his fucking house for free. So I don't know what the fuck is going on there. I'm never going to know what's going on there because like, I'm not going to get the truth out of it. I don't, nobody understands why there's so many different scenarios. People are like, is there something wrong with the guy? I don't know. I hope there's not something wrong with the guy. I wouldn't wish that. But it's also like, if there was something wrong with the guy, I wish he would just tell me that, you know? Um, fucking annoying. So, anyways, the day came where, like, we're going back and forth and back and forth all summer. Am I going with you? Am I not? Am I going with you? Am I not? Okay, yeah, I'm going with you. Okay, that's the conclusion that we came to. So I packed up all of my fucking stuff. Everything that I have here, I packed up. Well, I started packing it up, not not every single thing, because I, you know, wasn't going to put all my eggs in one basket, because this is kind of how it's been all summer long with this guy, and the day finally came where he was about to leave, and I was like, so you're just fucking leaving me here? And he's like, well, if you could get to uh, New Jersey tomorrow, then I'll wait for you, and I'm like, okay, so I'm like scrambling, trying to find a way to get to fucking New Jersey from Connecticut, because of course, he can't just drive to me for once, right? Like, he can't just come to Connecticut to come pick me up or anything, knowing that I have a whole bunch of shit that I can't fly with. I have my jewelry, I have, like, my jewelry making supplies, I have all my clothes, like, everything. I can't fly with all of this shit. And the day finally comes, and he just, he leaves, he leaves, he drives the fuck away from me. And I'm like, are you joking? Like, are you joking? You just put me through all this shit all summer. I just waited for fucking six months for your ass to fucking drive away from me. Like, is this a joke? I'm like, I thought you were fucking waiting for me. He's like, that was a mistake. It's not going to work out and stuff. I don't know how it's going to work out with him and everything. Okay, so you fucking decided to choose your ex over me. And you knew you were going to fucking do that the whole entire time. He knew he was going to do that, right? Like, he knew. So I'm just, like, fucking pissed. So then he finally gets to Delaware, where he's staying for, like, a little bit. Because that's where his friend lives. And he usually stops there for a little bit and then continues on with his trip which is something i was really looking forward to because we had a really good time doing that last year in rehoboth beach but whatever whatever so he's there just totally fine calling me oh I'm, i miss you i'm gonna be with you soon i promise you'll be in florida in a week so i'm fucking pissed right but he's still manipulating me still getting into my head making me think oh i still have a chance here i can still be with him in a week if i just wait still fucking dragging me on 
Like, do you know how fucking frustrating this is? Six fucking months of my life it's been like this. I haven't been able to fucking drive because my license is fucking suspended. I can't take care of it until I get to Florida. Like, my whole fucking life has been on pause because of this shit. So, I still fucking buy into it. Okay, he's gonna have me there in a week. He has to take care of whatever he has to take care of. Bitch, tell me why it's been over a fucking week and I'm still in Connecticut. Still in fucking Connecticut, freezing my fucking ass off while my fucking car is there. And what is he doing? He's at the fucking club with the guy who said he couldn't fucking bring me there because he doesn't he doesn't know how it's going to go with him. Because this guy has such a fucking problem with me. And he has he's like, oh my god, I don't know. Like, I, I miss you so much. I have to get you here. I have to get you here somehow. Somehow. Like, it's the fucking, like, 1800s. And we don't have any vehicles. We don't have any planes or anything. We don't have any fucking way to get me there. I'm so sick and tired of this shit. Like, and I'm sitting there fucking yelling at him on the phone every day, just like this. And all it's doing is just dragging on, enabling him. Oh, I still have my twink. I still have my twink. Oh, he's still going to be waiting for me in Christmas and fucking New Year's Eve. And he'll be here next year. I can't fucking do it anymore. I said that, like, I couldn't do this after October 31st. And here I am on November, like, 2nd or November 3rd or whatever it is. Fucking screaming and crying about this shit. I haven't spoken to him in, like, 24 hours, which is a big accomplishment for me. And I'm going to keep going. Because, like, I'm going to fucking lose my shit. For real. I'm stranded. I have no fucking car. Like, I feel like I'm in prison. I feel like a child. I feel like I'm, like, 15 years old again. It's ridiculous. And I feel like a loser. Because I, I'm, like... Like, what am I doing? What am I doing with my fucking life? And I'm in this position because of a fucking relationship? Stupid. Learned my lesson. So, I, the only reason I'm really putting this out there is to fucking tell somebody to listen to me bitch because i didn't listen to anybody actually it's not even that i didn't listen to anybody it's that i just never thought this would be me and i'm here to tell you it could be you because i never thought that i would be that bitch i never ever once thought like i would ever let a man ruin anything in my life have control over anything and i'm taking that fucking control back it does piss me off that I even let it get to that point, but it, I'm just gonna have to view it as, like, a learning lesson for me. That, like, you know, don't don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't rely on anybody. And if you want something done for yourself, make sure you fucking do it yourself. Because I could have been in Florida this whole entire time. Instead of being sitting here, but being fucking stranded, not being able to fucking do shit, really. So, I mean, like, I'll get back there. I'll have my own plan and everything. I still have to go get my car and stuff like that. So, obviously, I'm going to have to go very, very soon anyways. But it's just really irritating. It's, like, just the fact that last year on Halloween, he pulled this shit with me where, like, I, I kept asking him, like, oh, can we do something today? What are you doing today? And all this stuff. And he's like, I'm not going out today. It's Monday. Who goes out on a Monday? Like, there's nothing to do. And I, like, it was my first time, like, even being there, really, for Halloween, because I just moved there on Halloween the year before that, so I didn't get to experience Halloween, so I was, like, all excited, but I didn't know what, like, goes on and stuff. Oh, well, guess what, bitch? There's this big slutty fucking club, slutty-ass fucking place that you wouldn't want your fucking partner going to without you. And he, guess who he went there with? Yeah, the fucking ex. He went there with him the whole fucking night and turned his phone off, and he comes back at my apartment at, like, 4 o'clock in the morning. Shady as fuck. I know something happened on that day, and I was so close to breaking up with him on Halloween last year, and I haven't been able to let go of that. And here we are again on Halloween the next year, and I'm fucking stranded in Connecticut, and he's they're doing the same fucking shit he did last year only i don't even get to see him at the end of it i'm so fucking done with this shit like he's literally like traumatized me traumatized me on halloween twice now like i'm so fucking pissed off i'm so pissed off and i have to be strong and i have to not talk to him and i'm not saying that this is it forever because if you see me with him again don't don't say I didn't warn you. I didn't say never again. I was just saying, like, I'm never putting up with this shit anymore. Like, with anybody. I still have to go back there. So, there's that. It's just annoying that, like, this guy came first always. And it's like, there was such a, a long period of time where things were really good. 
But that's what makes me sad about it is that like now when I'm complaining about it, it seems like I've just been in this really shitty relationship for two years, but it's not like that. Like it was good for such a long time. Like it didn't start off great, okay? Like it took a while to get there. But when it got there, everything was really good for a while. And the distance is just really what ruined it for me. I can't do long distance. And I told him that for a long time. I told him that for months before I knew that it was coming. Because the first year we were together, I was like, all right, like, this is a new thing. He didn't expect to be with a re it, like with somebody in a relationship at this point. So I kind of understand him going to do his thing in the summer and not really having a plan like specifically for me but when it came to the next year I expected like to be involved more like I expected him to include me more and it wasn't like that at all I actually ended up staying with him less this year than I did the year before so it's like I'm making all these sacrifices I'm going back to somewhere where I don't necessarily want to be and not only that but like I'm paying a lot of money for, like, transportation, going to see him, like, eating out, like, doing all this stuff that's so unnecessary just to be with him, just to spend time with the person I'm dating. And it's, like, for what? For what in the end? Because, like, it would have been worth it if the relationship continued. I didn't know that it was just going to end like that at the end of the summer. If I knew that, A, I wouldn't have came back here for this long, and B... I definitely wouldn't have fucking put any effort into going to see him all summer long like that. So, I don't know. I don't really know what the fuck went through my mind. But I don't think it's my fault, though. Like, I'm being a little rough on myself for being, like, I'm beating myself up for being hopeful. But it's like, I couldn't really see the signs. Maybe I was just blind to them, but I could not see the signs that he was not going to bring me. I thought... 100% in my heart even when I was like iffy about it and I was like oh I don't know I don't know what's gonna happen and stuff I always thought in the back of my mind like there's no way he's gonna leave me he's not gonna do that I know he's not that much of an asshole that's what I kept saying I know he's an ass but he's not that bad I just want to let the gays and the ladies know that if you have the mindset that you're gonna go for an older guy because you think that they're gonna be more mature and you think there's going to be less drama, you think they're going to be more committed, don't do that. Because you're wrong. Because it doesn't matter. Age does not fucking matter, hun. It doesn't matter if they're 5 years older than you, 10 years older than you, 15, 20. It doesn't fucking matter how much older they are than you. That has nothing to do with who they are as a person. Because that was my mindset, kind of. I was kind of like, oh, let me go for an older guy. Because... I just am not down for, like, the shadiness of people my age. I know a lot of gays my age are open. I know that, you know, I just, I know how shit works. I wasn't born yesterday. So I was, like, maybe a little bit older. Well, I went a lot older, okay? And it's no different than dating somebody my own age. It has nothing to do with the age. It's the mindset. And I think that a lot of it also is just the gay community. A lot of gays are open and they're okay with that. And that's fine if it works for them. But I think a lot of the time it doesn't work because there's usually one person that is not into it. There's one person that does want it. There's one person that's not 100% into it. And it usually doesn't end well. And I see that a lot with gay couples. A lot. And I just think that's a thing. Like, I think that gays just tend to not really stay committed to somebody for that long. And I think that's really just what happened. I think that, like, maybe he got bored or something. Um, but one thing that I do know is that I'm hot. I'm young. I have a lot to offer. I'm motivated. I have my shit together. Like, so I really can't put, like, I know that I've had shitty reactions to the way that he's treated me, but, like, he's driven me there. So, like, I will own up to the way that I've reacted to things. I will own up to my part. Like, I've had some ugly moments, okay? Bitch, I fucking was so pissed off and slammed my hand down on the table. I broke the fucking glass table with my stainless steel ring. 
like I've had my own moments where it's like I would probably even look at myself and be like this is too much that he stayed for and I'm thankful for that but like I would say a lot of the time not justified but my actions are a little bit understandable to normal people out there I think um I'm not gonna go out there and put all my dirty laundry out there and say every scenario that I've reacted to but um a lot of the times when I've reacted or I've thrown a fit or I've gotten angry with him he's like to turn it around on me and be like see this is what I can't do this is what I don't want and it's like yeah I don't want this either I don't want to be like that either but like you've driven me there mama you made me get to that point so it's like I don't know. I don't know what kind of situation I'm in. I know I'm being gaslit. I know I'm being manipulated. But at the same time, it's like, it's kind of like a uh, Eugenia Cooney girl. You can only, I'm, I'm very aware of it. You can only yell at somebody so much you have to get out of this situation. I mean, they're not going to do it unless they want to. And I don't know if I'm fully willing to walk away from this situation 100% right now, but I do know that I need to take a break from it. Um, but that's my update on it. I don't think that many people really watch these types of videos from me because I don't think that many people care, but I know that there's a few people out there that will get a message from this, and hopefully that message is to love yourself first, bitch. Love yourself first. Get your shit together. And then if the time's right, you know, naturally allow people in and see how things go. But always love yourself first. Do not drop anything for a man. Do not fucking make all these sacrifices for a man. Because at the end of the day, a lot of people are all about themselves. And, you know, that could be negative and positive. But some of us need to start putting ourselves first. And that's not really a bad thing. So... Yeah, I'll give you an update when I know what's happening. As of right now, I'm in Connecticut. I'm s kind of stuck low-key. I'm not really stuck as in, like, I have no way to get back there. I'm stuck as in, like, I don't know where to go from here. I don't know what direction to go in. I don't know. Do I wait for him more? Like, do I... I don't know. I don't know. Because I... In my mind, it's kind of like, if he really, really wanted me there, I would have been with him anyways. I would have driven there with him. I would have made the trip to Delaware. I would have already been there. And then another part of me is, like, I can understand why he was a little weird about it at first and maybe wanted to go adjust some things. But as of right now, I'm not looking at my phone. I have my phone off, my other phone. And this phone is really just, like, a work phone and it's for videos and stuff like that. So, yeah. I don't know. I'm gonna go no contact, see what happens, and give you an update. But, yeah, love yourself first. Bye. Love you, mean it.